Let's start the equation of the tangent line problems on the homework for derivatives of exponential functions. And uh, whenever you're finding the equation of the tangent line, I recommend that you start off by writing the equation of a linear line in point slope form. And once you've done that, uh, the goal is that you should find your x1 and y1 values first. I know that my x value is 1, and if I want to find the corresponding y value, that's the same thing as computing f of 1. And f of 1 just basically means anytime you see x in the original function, you just replace those with um, the value of 1. So e to the power of negative 1 divided by the square root of 1. And this is simply going to be e to the power of negative 1, which is just 1 over e. Okay, and then uh, what I can do now is I can update my tangent line here. So this will be uh, y minus 1 over e, and my x value is going to be 1. So uh, that's part 1 of the uh, tangent line question. And uh, the next part of the tangent line is that is that you need to find the derivative value here, which is the uh, slope, right? So we need to find the derivative value when x equals to 1 here. Okay, uh, so for this problem here, um, I definitely, I, I guess we're going to apply the uh, quotient rule here. So let me just kind of erase this. So I need to find the derivative of the numerator here. And if you're watching the homework help video guide, you might just want to watch the first few steps here because I'll be erasing some things and going back. So the derivative of the numerator is just e to the power of negative x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the power, which is simply just negative 1. Right? And then um, now if I multiply that together, e to the negative x times negative 1, I'm going to rewrite that as just... Um, it's just negative e to the power of negative x. So that's a little bit nicer to write. And then we multiply that by the denominator, and the denominator is root x, so root x. And then the quotient rule states that I need to subtract. And then I subtract the numerator, which is e to the power of negative x. And then I times by the derivative of the, um, the bottom here. Now, I know the bottom is just root x, and we know that root x is the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. And if I take the derivative of x to the power of 1 half, that's going to be 1 half times uh, x to the power of negative 1 half. Then I erase all that. And then I can divide the whole thing now by the denominator all squared. Okay, so that's looking uh, pretty good there. And uh, now we need to find the derivative value when x equals to 1, right? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so my next step is let's go ahead and find f prime of 1. And basically what that means is all these x values, they get replaced with just uh, uh, the value 1, right? So if I just rewrite this, um, this will be negative e to the power of negative 1 times the square root of 1 minus bracket e to the power of negative 1. And then I have uh, times 1 half bracket 1 to the negative 1 half. And then we divide by the denominator which is the square root of 1 all squared and uh, the square root of 1 all squared I mean the denominator here is just 1 right so if you want you can just erase that right away and then uh, maybe we can just start simplifying this um, this first part here is a little bit weird there's a minus sign there so this is really minus 1 over e to the power 1 minus and then uh, it turns out that this is also just 1 over e and then uh, it turns out that this part here, 1 to the power of negative 1 half, is the same thing as 1 to the power of anything. And 1 to the power of anything is always going to be 1. So all that's left is that really that green 1 half there. Okay, so uh, e to the power of 1 here, I mean, that's just really negative 1 over e. And then minus 1 over, and if I multiply these two terms there, I get 2e there. Okay, so we're almost done here. We just need to kind of simplify this. So um, I would multiply the top and bottom by 2 here. So if I put a 2 here, I need to multiply the top by a 2 as well. And now I have negative 2 minus 1. So negative 2 minus 1 is going to be negative 3 divided by 2e. Okay, and that right there is my derivative value when x equals to 1. So if I go back to um, my tangent line here at the start here, uh, if I start erasing some of this now, uh, my final answer is now y minus 1 over e, and my derivative value is, it was uh, negative 3 over 2e, and then uh, bracket x minus 1. So that is my tangent line to this particular problem here. 
Okay, so although that's the right answer there, uh, let's go ahead and just show a visual from Desmos here, uh, what we just found here. So I just have a screenshot of, uh, of the question here and um, the, the graph that's highlighted in red is actually the original function, which is y equals to e to the power of negative x divided by uh, the square root of x. And uh, the tangent line is the, the equation that we just found, which was y minus one over e um, equals to, uh, I think I had negative uh, three over two e bracket x minus one. And it turns out that we're tangent at this particular point right there. And uh, if you wanna know that intersection point, it's um, really gonna be the point uh, one and uh, one over e, right? So uh, if I, the point's always on your tangent line, which is one comma one over e. That's the point where the graph, um, that's the point of tangency on that graph there. Okay, so there's a visual of what we just found there, and hopefully that can help you understand um, what the solution means. Okay, let's move on to another uh, graphing type of problem here, not a tangent line question, but now the question states, at which points does this function have a tangent line that's parallel to this line? Okay, so um, at what points does uh, this function here have a tangent line that's parallel to this graph right here. Okay, so uh, basically what we need to do first is we need to find the slope of this linear line here, and we can do that by solving for y. So uh, this is the same thing as four x minus two equals to y, and if I just rearrange this, this will be y equals to four x minus two, and then from there I can see that the slope of that line is gonna be four, right? So four is the slope, okay. That's pretty good because uh, when we take the derivative of this term right here, uh, sorry, of that of that equation there, y equals to e to the power of two x. When when I take that derivative, in order for that function to be parallel, it must have the same slope as this linear line here, right? So I'm going to take the derivative of that function and set it equal to four. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative here. This is be y prime equals to e to the power of two x. And then we take the derivative of the power there and the derivative of two X is simply gonna be two. If I rewrite this, this is the same thing as two times e to the power of two X. And I have my, uh, although I have Y prime here, we should set Y prime equals to four, right? Because uh, we wanna make sure that that function is tangent to, uh, sorry, we wanna make sure that the tangent line is parallel to that line, right? So we have to make sure that the derivative expression equals to four. Okay, so uh, now I can divide both sides of the equation by two here. So this and this will cancel, and four divided by two is two, so two equals to uh, e to the power of two x. And uh, maybe I should just leave a little space here, uh, so this is two equals two. And then uh, once you have that, um, what you wanna do is you wanna solve for the x that's trapped with the two x. So you can bring that down by lawning both sides, so lawn that side and lawn that side. So now you have ln of two, and that's gonna equal two. Uh, well, this expression here now gets soccer kicked to the front. So that's gonna be a two x uh, times uh, ln e. So uh, ln in green, and then blue in e. Okay, uh, well this part right here, ln e is just one. So now I just have two x equals to ln two. I can divide both sides by two, so this will be ln two divided by two, all right? So we're just dividing both sides by two, right? All right, so our x value is ln two, and uh, now we need to find the, the y value here, right? So x is ln two divided by two. Uh, let's go back to the original question here. Let's just create a little bit of space by erasing some of this. And um, so I know that y would equal to e to the power of two x. And I know that we just found that x was equal to ln two divided by two. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna replace this x with ln two divided by two. All right, so if I do that, I get y equals to e to the power of two times ln two divided by two. And then uh, this and this will cancel. And now I have y equals to e to the power of ln two and uh, this and this will cancel, and now you're just left with y would equal to two. Okay, so that means for finally, our final answer is our x value is ln two over two, and our y value is positive two. And that right there is our final answer there. Okay, so although that we've, although, although we've found the final answer, we should also just take a little look at the graph here. 
Okay, so this is another uh, snapshot from uh, Desmos here. So uh, the function in red is the original function, which is y equals to e to the power 2x. And uh, the purple function is just the uh, linear line. So I believe the purple function was 4x minus y equals to 2. And uh, this blue dot right there, that intersection point, sorry, that blue dot right there, um, that coordinate, so the blue dot is really just uh, ln 2 over 2 comma 2. And as you can see, if I draw a tangent line right here, sorry, if I draw a tangent line right there at that point, ln 2 over 2, it's definitely parallel to the uh, linear line over there. And uh, that's what we're trying to find. We're just trying to find the coordinates on the original function where it's parallel to that random linear line that's just right next to us. Okay, uh, let's move on to one more graphing question and that will conclude this homework video guide. Okay, uh, so now we have one of these external point questions here with with a function with an exponential function here, right? So um, I see that we have an external point right here and this is our function right here. Um, you know, I've done enough of these problems where um, I know I can set this up by saying that the slope, sorry, maybe I'll just use the exact language in my math class. So I, I definitely set up a, a math 10 set up here and, um, and then I have a, a calculus 12 column over here. And then for math 10, I just say the slope and then calculus, we call that the derivative. If I want to find the slope in math 10, um, I know it's going to be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, and then calc 12, I call that y prime. All right, so now um, once I've kind of got that column set up here, I notice that there's a point here, right? And uh, I mean, that point is going to connect to another random point that I don't know, so we'll call that random point just x comma y. Okay, now the key thing here is uh, once you have uh, these two points, two comma zero and x comma y, actually that's not a really great color there. Um, let me put this in a dark color, x comma y. Oops, okay, maybe I'll just use a, a really darker color here. So x comma y. Uh, what you wanna do here is you really want to uh, connect uh, a slope equation between these two points, right? So. Uh, what you want to do is you want to establish establish that establish that somewhere over here using those two points. Now it doesn't really matter which order you use as long as you line it up line it up correctly. So if I say this is going to be y, then my second y value should be zero, and then that will be divided by x uh, minus two there. Okay, so make sure that you have that particular uh, setup correct, and then uh, we're going to make this equal to. Um, y prime and what is y prime here well here's your y function so if i find y prime here this will be e to the power of x over 2 times by the derivative of the power and that derivative is just one half okay so this is really equal to e to the power of x over 2 um whoops sorry it's really a uh, one half times e to the power of x over 2. okay so that's my derivative of the original function. And once I have that original function there, now I can kind of substitute that over here as just one half uh, times uh, e to the power of x over two. Okay, so now we're in a situation where we need to solve this, um, we need to go ahead and now solve this uh, rational expression right here. And now we're kind of getting into like the grade 11 kind of math here. And one thing I noticed is that there's an x variable, sorry, there's a, there's an x variable here on the bottom and there's an x variable there on the exponent. So we, we need to make sure that this y variable is also in terms of like another x variable. And uh, what that means is if I go back to the original problem here, I know that y equals to e to the power of x over two, right? So I can substitute that y with the original function here. So if I erase this now, this is gonna be uh, e to the power of x over two. Okay. So now we've got to solve uh, this uh, particular equation here, and this isn't too bad. This is just a rational function here. Uh, this part right here on the on the numerator, right? If I if I subtract zero, I just have e to the power of x over two, all divided by x minus two, and then uh, this one this will equal to. Now I'm going to rewrite this slightly in a different way here. I'm going to write this as e to the power of x over two, and then and I will just divide that by two there. And the reason why I do that is because now I can just crisscross. All right, so if I crisscross that, 
Actually, no, not, I don't want to crisscross. Let me just interchange uh, these two. Let me just interchange those two terms. And uh, mathematically, what am I really doing here? Um, I think we can all agree that three over six is 50%, which is the same thing as five over 10, right? Uh, what I can do here is I can just uh, interchange those two terms. So uh, that'll be 10 over six equals to five over three, right? And as you can see, 10 over six is really uh, five over three and uh, that equals to five over three, right? So I'm just gonna interchange those two terms. And then if I do that, I get a two here divided by x minus two, and then that equals two. Well, this top function remains, so that's gonna be e to the x over two, all divided by e to the power of x over two. Okay, so this part right here now, this part right here just moved to the bottom there, right? So I'm just interchange those two uh, pieces there. Okay, let me just erase this now. Okay, uh, this is good because uh, if you notice this part right here on the uh, right hand side, I have the same function divided by the same function, right? So the same thing divided by the same thing is just one. Okay, so now I have a classic uh, equation here. So now uh, I can take this part right here and multiply it with the one. So now I have two equals to x minus two, and that means x would equal to four. Great, so uh, we were able to find our uh, x value, which is four, and then uh, what do I need to do now? Okay, so I, I just found out that, I just found that my x value was equal to four. Uh, we just need to find the corresponding y value and the slope value to find the uh, equation of the tangent line. So uh, maybe what I'll do right now is I'll write uh, the equation of a tangent line right here. So uh, this x equals to four is really uh, that particular point right there. And we should go ahead and find the y1 value and um, the uh, m value. So um, there's uh, different ways you can do this. Um, in fact, I, maybe the easiest way to do this particular question is that we know there's an external point two comma zero, right? Two comma zero. So instead of using x equals to four, let's just use two comma zero as our point there. So I have y minus zero equals to m bracket uh, x minus two. And then I, my suggestion is let's use this x equals to four to find the slope of the value at that particular point. So that I know that my original function was y equals to e to the x over two. And I know my derivative was one half e to the power of x over two. I'm just saying that if we know the value is four, let's find the derivative function at four by replacing that with the four. And now my slope will be one over two e to the power of four over two, which is really e to the power of two divided by two. Okay. And now I can um, erase all of this. And my new tangent line is y equals to e to the power of two over two, and then bracket x minus two. Okay, so uh, there's a few, there's different ways where you can get the final tangent line. You can use different points. Um, I just thought it might have been easier if we just use the external point that was given to us and then we can find the value of the slope when x equals to 4 to find our m value and that might be a little bit more, a little, a little less work to find the final answer there. Uh, regardless of what method you use, you should still get the same tangent line. Okay, so before I finish up this video here, uh, let's go ahead and, um, and show the visual graph of this. So uh, this right here is the external point that was given in, given to us in the question. So that's two comma zero, the external point. The original equation was y equals to uh, e to the power of x over two in red. And uh, the purple line is the tangent line, which is what we just found. So uh, y would equal to e to the power of two divided by two, bracket x minus two. Okay, and I guess uh, the intersection point is uh, just right there, I guess. Now we didn't have to find the intersection point, but um, we know the x value was four, right? So um, if we did, if we wanted to find that intersection point, we did find that the x value was four, and then I guess we can plug in four into the original problem. So that will be e to the power of four divided by two, which is e to the power of two, right? So uh, if you want to find that intersection point, then, uh, then uh, just plug in four back into the original problem there. So once again, uh, this uh, four right here, which I'm highlighting in green right there, um, that was uh, this answer right here. 
and uh, I was just trying to find uh, the slope there, right? So um, we know that at that particular intersection point right here, I can definitely plug in uh, four back into the derivative expression to find e2 over two, right? Okay, so that's how I kind of arrived arrive to my final answer there. Okay, so hopefully this graph kind of helps you uh, visualize what we were trying to do for that particular problem there.